time now for Keller at Large. And before we hand it over to John Keller, we want to remind you he taped his segment earlier this week before video was widely released of Donald Trump making some crude comments about women during a shoot for an entertainment program. Here's John. morning. Only 29 days to go until Election Day, and with the outcome of both the presidential vote and the Senate race in New Hampshire looming large in the national picture, we're pleased to be joined this morning by James Pindle of the Boston Globe. Uh, James is a campaign reporter and analyst for the Globe and a longtime expert on New Hampshire politics. Welcome, James. Thank you. As long as you promise, there are only 29 days to go. It's not going to go any longer. As long as you promise. I suppose we could apply oh, for an extension, geez. you know, like you do for a term <laughs> done. paper. Yeah, well, the voting's already started <laughs> in a lot of places. And the new Boston Globe Suffolk University poll that came out this past week shows in New Hampshire a statistical dead heat between Clinton and Trump. She's up by two points. That's within the margin of error. And pollster Dave Paleologus uh, suggested that the 5% of voters currently backing Gary Johnson, the Libertarian nominee, could be decisive. Do you agree with that? Do you feel that in New Hampshire? Oh, absolutely. That's one of the reasons you saw this particular poll collapse. You know, Donald Trump has never led a single poll in the general election in New Hampshire against Hillary Clinton, but largely that gap was bigger between Clinton and Trump. But the right. one big, big, big difference there was that Gary Johnson was hanging around at about 9, 10, 12, 13 percent. In fact, it's the second best state in the entire country outside of his home state of New Mexico. Yep. He performed it was the best state in terms of a swing state. But when you saw his numbers collapse, really for two reasons, right, his unforced errors on foreign policy, and second, he was excluded from the presidential debates. Those numbers have been going largely, for the most part, to Donald Trump when you've seen that uh, uh, lead for Hillary Clinton collapse. Uh, the Donald Trump bucket, half of them may be voting for Jerry, Gary Johnson, the other half really are sort of just parking themselves there as an undecided, along with the 7% that are still undecided, is really going to make up this race. Who's got the excitement edge in New Hampshire? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Like everywhere else, it's Donald Trump has the excitement edge. But there's two ways of looking at this election this particular poll found, almost 60% of people said they were alarmed by this election. And if you are alarmed, you're voting with Clinton. If you are excited about this election, about one out of five voters were, you are definitely with Trump. What is likelier to get you out to the polling place, alarm or excitement? Well, it could come down to a simple ground game here. I mean, Hillary Clinton has yeah. identified and given a score to every single registered voter in New Hampshire so that you have an ability to get them out to vote. Donald Trump just simply does not have the troops to do that. In the end, we're talking about margins so thin, that may make the difference. Hmm. Now, uh, on Thursday, I believe it was, last Thursday, uh, Trump hastily arranged a <laughs> town hall Is that what it was? In Santa, yeah, what was that? <laughs> I don't know, so don't ask me to define he it. He insisted it wasn't a dress rehearsal yeah. for tonight, And it Sunday certainly night. wasn't, and it certainly wasn't, because he took friendly questions from an invite-only audience. There wasn't, the stage was not done the same way. Yeah. Uh, he had a friendly moderator doing it. He only did it for a half hour instead of 90 minutes, so it clearly wasn't stage. I'm not sure exactly what that was at the end of the day. Uh, I mean... Uh, other, than, other than a slice in the pie of when his advisors say, we need to prepare, 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 he says, okay, I'll show up, and then actually doesn't do it. That may be like a, some insight as to how he's preparing for these debates. Do you believe he's doing the same lax preparation that led into that debacle in the first debate? Well, I don't know, but here's what I do know. I know he keeps adding public events to his schedule. Uh, therefore, he has to fly to places like Wisconsin last night uh, to hold an event while Hillary Clinton is locked down on debate prep. Right. Right. I know that. Well, it certainly showed in the first one. What do you expect tonight? Look, I think this is the most unpredictable 90 minutes of a highly unpredictable presidential campaign. Yeah. And the major factors here, right, are the stage. There's no podiums. Right. Their physical appearance, we've seen that happen in the past, where how that interplay plays out. John McCain walking around aimlessly in the debate. Bush or, checking his or watch. Bush checking his watch or Al Gore getting in George W. Bush's face. But the question here is the audience. You know, a person can ask an intellectual question about Hillary Clinton's emails, but what happens if a larger woman gets up and says, Donald Trump, yeah. am I fat, and what do you think of me? Yeah. That is an amazing moment. Can't wait. That's what I'm, I was, I'm looking forward to. All right, we'll take a break, and we'll continue our conversation. We'll focus in on that red-hot New Hampshire Senate race as we continue talking with James Pindle of the Boston Globe. So please stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking with James Pindle of the Boston Globe about the presidential race and the Senate race in New Hampshire. And let's focus in on that Senate race now. They knew Boston Globe Suffolk University poll had Kelly Ayotte up six points. That's 
roughly consistent with what other polls have shown, but it only covered one day after last week's debate where Ayotte memorably uh, indicated that, yes, she thought Donald Trump was a role model for kids, a statement that she walked back the next day and is now the focus of a new uh, Maggie Hassan attack ad. How big a deal is that? Well, it goes to the narrative of this entire race. I mean, there's a lot of superlatives, superlatives you want to step back for why people in Boston should care about this race. Number one, it's probably the most nationally watched race in the entire country mm -hmm. because there are five races that can really decide control of the U.S. Senate next year. A lot of them are very tight, but the New Hampshire race may be the one that, that people are looking at, that one in Pennsylvania, as flipping the entire concept. Number two, it's probably the most high-profile race in American history featuring two women um, in terms of not only because the importance of the Senate seat, but because of their backgrounds. One's a sitting U.S. Senator against the sitting governor. It's the most expensive race in New Hampshire history, as I'm sure a lot of BZ viewers seen, all the different ads. Yeah. And what's fascinating about these two women who have such tremendous resumes, have spent their entire lives preparing for this race, and the issues have really mattered uh, in this race in terms of, there are issues that do matter completely defined by the presidential race. Um, this whole, this whole, the big moments in this race have been when Maggie Hassan is flubbed about her, you know, how much does she trust Hillary Clinton? And then of course this debate moment on Monday night when Kelly Ayotte, who's been threading the needle so hard, trying to thread it so hard about uh, trying to appear independent of Donald Trump, yet at the same time not lose his supporters on the right. And she really messed up on Monday night. And yet she's been running significantly ahead of Trump in New Hampshire. Yeah, we've seen, this is something we've been seeing uh, around in the number of these battleground Senate seats. You know, there's an open question in, say, May or June about if Donald Trump really is the nominee, is he going to bring down other Republicans around the country? Does that mean the Senate's going away? Does it mean the House is going away? The answer is no. Voters right now, which is very fascinating, are seeing a disconnect. They don't see Trump as a Republican. They just see him as Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Senate candidates like Kelly Ayotte in New Hampshire, Marco Rubio in Florida, or the candidates in Pennsylvania or in Nevada are running ahead of Donald Trump. He's not bringing them down. They're actually bringing Donald Trump up. One thing I think I know about New Hampshire politics is that if you're around for a while, I mean, you do, the voters do get to know you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Kelly Ayotte's been in the public eye for a, a, over a decade in New Hampshire. Uh, is there a risk that anti-Trump voters will decide, oh, she's too, too, too close to him, I'm going to have to dump her on the day? Well, boy, you really catch on the dynamic, because the dynamic here is that Kelly Aya is running against history. You know, New Hampshire is the swingiest of swing states. It votes Rep Democratic in presidential years, Republican in midterm years. She got elected in a Re Republican midterm year. She's now up in Democratic presidential year, and it's her personality, her likability, that's really the reason why she's winning this race right now. All right, James, hang in there. 29 days, you think you can make it? If you promise. <laughs> That's all, all right. it is. I, I, my money's we'll breathe after that. We'll be watching you and uh, your uh, uh, daily ground game newsletter as well. Great reading, a must read for political junkies. That's it for us. Now I'm going to send it back over to my colleagues for more WBZ News.